What is going on guys? I'm Consumer Tech Review and today we're going to be reviewing a gaming switch. It's very unique. It's very cool. It's very different. Let's get into it. All right. So first off, thank you to Asus for sponsoring today's video. Now, even though they're sponsoring today's video, these are all my own opinions. This is all an honest review of their switches. Okay, so firstly, this is an optical gaming switch, which is, well, arguably the best way to make a gaming switch is optical. It's faster, it's more reliable, and most of the time it's going to be smoother. So there are three main parts of this switch that make it, well, a lot more unique than your average, well, switch that you get in a mechanical keyboard. But this is a gaming switch, so these are three things that kind of accentuate the gaming. The first one is the stem. The second is a centralized LED which is very strange, never seen this before, but it's not a bad thing. And then lastly, what Asus calls their X stabilizer, and this is actually not like a stabilizer on your space bar, enter, shift, all of those, but it is actually inside each switch. Before we continue with the video giveaway alert, every single Sunday, every video that comes out on Sunday that I do, so once a week we're doing a keyboard giveaway. If you want to be entered to win a Gas67 DIY keyboard kit, the winner will be choosing seven days from the posting date, which is, well, right now for you. Find the two second clip in this video that will show you how to enter in this giveaway. So if you want to win a Gas67, check that out. But now back to the video. All right, first let's talk about the stem. Now this stem uses a hollow square stem design. Now right away, I kind of noticed there's definitely going to be some advantages to this when compared to your average switch. Now this design kind of mimics what a dustproof stem looks like, where it kind of is, some companies call it box, like a box switch. Uh, a dustproof stem kind of just has those basically walls that come actually out of the switch. This usually helps with stem wobble a bit. Now the thing here that's very interesting is this stem is probably double the size of your average stem. It's literally just bigger. So how is the stem wobble? Well, there's incredibly little. These are very tight. Top to bottom and side to side wobble is pretty much the same, which is not always common. Usually on your traditional switches, you will see more up and down or more left to right. But on this one, the amount of wobble is pretty linear, which is a good thing and it's like very tight. They definitely have the least wobble when compared to popular gaming switches like Kale Silver Speed Switches, Cherry Silver Switches, and Razer's Optical Red Switch. With the Kale Silver Speed Switches and the Cherry Silver Switches having quite a bit of wobble, if you guys have ever used these before, you will agree with me, there is a substantial amount of wobble. Then moving to Razer's Red Switches, which are also optical switches, so same kind of technology there, it's just the laser being cut off, whatever. Same technology, Razer still has more wobble than these do, and Razer's design is overall just it's a little bit weird, it's not terrible overall, but it's not as polished as this. It's not as robust. And then these just have significantly less wobble than all of them by far, especially the Kale Silver Speed Switches. Those are like, well, they're like two different worlds. These are very, very tight. The feeling that you get from these is a refined and just a solid experience because there is well, basically zero wobble. Now, even when comparing this to non-gaming switches that are on higher end custom keyboards, you still have incredibly little wobble. These are on par with that, but obviously in a very different way. Now, continuing on with talking about the design, this has four rails. Now your traditional switch will have two rails. This one has four on the upper and lower corners of the left and the right side. So it has four rails. Now this is probably needed because that stem is, well, most of the switch. Its overall size is basically most of that switch. So that's probably why it needs more rails, but this also may add to the stability. Now continuing on with the design, if you'll see in the stem, you've probably seen it already in B-roll here, but it does not attach to the keycap in the same way. Rather than having an MX style or a cross that attaches to those keycaps, it actually has four like holes in the edges. Now Asus says this helps with stability with the keycap and pressure with the keycap. I'm not sure how much that's actually going to make a difference. The wobble is only gonna be affected by the stem's wobble inside of the switch. So that's not really gonna be the thing that actually changes when attaching the keycap to the switch, but it does make sense that if you're touching the side of the keycap, you should have better pressure than on an MX style switch just because the stem is smaller. However, in real life practice, did this make a massive difference to me? No, but it's also not a bad thing. But the main point here is they feel really, really solid. That's really the feeling you get when gaming on it is that it's incredibly solid. 
They don't wiggle, they don't move. And seeing this in a gaming keyboard, well, it's it's just really cool. All right, but let's get a little bit more in depth here rather than just feel, let's get real stats that you guys can compare. Now, being a gaming switch, you would expect a quicker actuation, and this does have that at 1.5 millimeters. Initial force of 40 grams with a total force of 55 grams. This is pretty middle ground, I would say, maybe slightly heavier, but Overall, if you like red switches, if you're into gaming, this is not gonna be offensive to anyone. Pretty much everyone's gonna like this weight. Now, is there things I would change here? Absolutely. I think I would have an actuation point slightly quicker, probably a 1.2 millimeters. However, my opinion on those is when only talking about gaming. So I do understand why Asus didn't kind of go that direction with ultimate speed as to balance the gaming performance with the overall usability of the keyboard. Because if they did that, it would be a very difficult keyboard to get to use when not gaming. Typing on it would be pretty hard, stuff like that. Now, even though this has a faster actuation and things such as that, this is a very easy keyboard to live with and use, well, not for gaming as well, which is very good. All right, but let's move on to real life gaming experience. Now, firstly, not a Switch thing, but the left control is like extended on these keyboards and they just shrink down that Windows key that is so nice to have in Battlefield. I just want to say that before getting into this, but let's get into it. Now, my overall experience was very good. The bottom out feel is very unique because of that internal X stabilizer thing. This is a good thing though. Most switches you'll find on custom keyboards are designed for typing or sound or smoothness. However, here it's actually designed with a key being bottomed out and left there for long periods of time, as well as speed and everything like that. But typing, well, that's not how they were designed. That means holding your hand there on the W, A, S, and D, you're going to be holding shift and W a lot of the time. It's hard to explain it as the feel is very unique, but that X stabilizer design that kind of works like this, it changes how the weight comes on of the switch and really makes it very enjoyable, not tiring to use. The smoothness overall is very appreciated because a lot of times more than sound, the smoothness is really what we want with a gaming switch because most of the time you're really not gonna be able to hear the switch when gaming, but you are gonna be able to feel it and feel it quite a bit because a lot of times we won't be just tapping at once, but we'll be on one key really feeling that W, feeling the shift. So this is a really good experience. But I will say, if you're not used to a fast actuation, it's really, really fun to do it. I remember my first time uh, using a fast actuating switch was like, whoa, this is a thing? So yeah, you can also expect that here. 1.5 millimeters is gonna be faster before you fully press down that key this switch will actuate and you'll start moving forward if you're pressing W or something like that. Now, when specifically comparing this to Razer's Optical Reds, I personally liked the Optical Reds, but these feel better. These are more satisfying. They're overall easier to press. And I don't know if that is a weight thing or if that's that X stabilizer and how the weight comes on it's just really good here. All right, but let's talk about the keyboards. There are three keyboards that have this switch in them in three different price points. So let's talk about that. The first one and cheapest is the Strix Scope RX. This is $129.99 on Amazon. We'll have links below. This is a wired full-size keyboard. You get a USB 2.0 inside of it, IP57 rating. So if you spill on it, you're probably gonna be good to go. There's a stealth key that hides apps and mutes audio, uh, an extended control key, which I absolutely love. And they got PBT keycaps. And the next one is the Strix Scope RX TKL Wireless Deluxe. That's a lot of words, but this one comes in at $169.99 on Amazon. The TKL gives a little bit more room on the desk when compared to that full size form factor. You have connectivity in Bluetooth, wired, or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, which is absolutely what you're gonna wanna use if you're gaming. It also has that stealth key. It also has that extended control key, which I absolutely love. And it also has those PBT keycaps. Although I think they're a little bit different on every single uh, one. And then the last one, the most expensive, which is very expensive, is the Claymore, which is $269.99 on Amazon. That has a lot of customizability. There's a separate number pad that you can slide into the left or right side. Uh, it's got a lot more things that it gives you. It's got a cool volume rocker. It's also Bluetooth wired and it's got a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And they're saying up to 43 hours with RGB on and the number pad connected. So that's actually very good. It's also got that USB inside and it's also got PBT keycaps. Now, these are very expensive boards and I'm just gonna say right away, 
I'm gonna say if you want to get these switches and use them, the Scope RX is probably the best value. Once you go up from there, obviously you get the wireless capabilities and you get a bunch of other things and stuff like that. But the Scope RX I think is definitely the best value. You get these switches, which is the main reason you're gonna be getting this keyboard or any of them. But in this keyboard, probably the best stabilizers of any gaming mechanical keyboard I've used even better than I believe the Ducky 13 SF. I seem to remember those being pretty good, but these are really, really good. The stabilizers are A1, the switch feel is fantastic. The sound is also not too bad. Take a quick listen. That's how they sound. The other ones you definitely get more, but they get, well, pretty expensive. So I would definitely recommend the Scope RX. The other ones are also great, but that one, probably the best value, especially for these switches. But sound and feel, this is important. I've talked about the feel a lot of the videos, so I may kind of skip over some stuff because I've already talked about it. But right off the bat, I have to say, these are probably the most satisfying stock gaming switches that I've tried to date. You gotta remember, if you're getting more traditional styled switches that don't completely redesign their switches and still keep a typical switch design, like a Kel Silver Speed Switch or a Cherry Gaming Switch, basically 100% of the time, if you want anything even close to this, you're going to need to lube and film your own switches. Do remember, this is a stock switch that feels incredibly smooth. Now these are not the quietest switches in the world, which is something I really prefer. I was actually surprised by the tone. Razor's switches, they sound like like fine, a little bit weird. It's almost like they sound like silent switches. They don't sound bad, but these definitely sound more of like a custom board. They're extremely smooth. These feel like hand lubed switches uh, and not just like budget hand lube switches. These feel like nice hand lube switches. They have a small amount of scratchiness, but I mean, it's minuscule and I'm comparing this to high-end custom switches, which is, well, it's very cool that we're at a point in time where I can literally compare a high-end custom switch to a gaming switch and they're like on equal footing. Now, after testing this a lot, we actually didn't talk about the LED much. The LED actually has this long like plastic magnifier, I think, that kind of goes through the literal middle of the switch. So all of these shine through keycaps, all of the printing is literally in the middle, which is kind of cool because that RGB is literally coming up through the middle, uh, which is something that you r like very rarely see. Now this I think may have something to do with the, maybe the stability, maybe it's like actually using this as a stability bar, kind of like a stabilizing it. And that may be where some of the scratchiness is coming from. This is more like a high end switch where if you feel scratchiness, it's like, oh, that's, Oh, but it's gone. The other really big thing with these switches is you won't get this satisfying linearity and the feel that these have out of a traditional switch. It's just not gonna happen with the spring and the stem of a traditional MX style switch. You just won't get it. It's so unique and different. And honestly, it's very good. They're just refined. And there was a lot of thought that was put into the design of these with that massive stem with four rails, as well as those X stabilizers, which provide a smooth yet responsive and enjoyable linear gaming switch. And that was the first thing that I noticed when gaming on these, like right away. First time I got these, opened them up, I was like, these switches are very nice and that is the reason you're gonna be buying this keyboard. Now this was exclusively a Switch review and overall I'm very impressed, but I do again wanna say of the three keyboards that Asus is selling, the Scope RX, which is the cheapest one, the full size one, it's wired. That is a really good experience for the price point while understanding that the switches are the main thing that you're getting when getting these boards. You are buying these for the very good switches for gaming and the RGB also rocks and surprisingly, surprisingly, the stabilizers are very good. All right, but again, if you wanna check out any of these keyboards, we'll have Amazon links below. But this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.